So a lot, a lot of WWE news from SmackDown. Um, I guess the big news among, well, I mean, you know, Brock Lesnar's return, Randy Orton, based on Matt Riddle's interview, um, he's having the back surgery, which will probably keep him out for the rest of the year. So that changes all the plans. Although Roman Reigns did absolutely do a direct promo right before one of the commercial breaks, you know, on Randy Orton. So he's definitely keeping that one alive. Um, so, but, you know, the show ended with Lesnar. I thought um, this was a really good, like, not a large crowd. I mean, it was the normal, um, you know, whatever, you know, a little over 6,000 type of crowd that they that they now get for their uh, Friday night shows. Um, but really hot crowd, you know, and just, um, you know, and obviously they, they thought it was like uh, something special. Vince came out. Um I guess that was like the big thing all day. Yeah, the big thing is uh, Vince McMahon comes out at the start of this show, and these fans, they're clapping, they're cheering, and before anybody writes on the board about crowd sweetening, which I'm sure there was some of, yeah, but, but there's see- plenty of video footage taken by fans, and uh, these fans are going nuts for Vince McMahon. Well, you knew they would. So It's, it's, uh, it's, a, weird, it's a weird thing because... Um, you know, you knew that they, you knew that they would, and uh, and he did it for that very reason. And they're really trying to promote that clip really hard to, I guess, um, you know, make it look like, and then you know, and it was what it was. You know, make it look like that the crowd just absolutely loves the guy, and it's uh, you know, whatever they're trying to keep him in, um, you know, whatever. I mean, I don't know. Um, no one knows how this thing's going to play out, but um, the crowd, it doesn't matter what he does. You know? Well, I will say one thing, and that is that uh, they said it would be business as usual, and uh, it was totally business as usual. I mean, this guy comes out, and he said, uh, then, now, forever, together, welcome to SmackDown. He threw the mic, he left, and then, dude, they just ran a show like nothing had happened. Apparently, in the back, it was like, he ran the show like nothing had happened, and uh, that was that was that. They did a riddle, long riddle interview talking about Randy Orton getting a thank you Randy chant, dedicating the match to Orton tonight, leaving to his music, uh, playing up big that he wouldn't be back for a long time. Uh, Happy Corbin at Madcap Moss. Uh, Ten minutes, last laugh match. So last laugh match was had no. It's just a match. It's just a match. But the idea is telling us it's the last one until you know next week or whatever. Until the next one. The idea is is that the loser gets laughed at by the winner. I guess and and the fans they made you know they tried to get the fans to laugh at him too. So well yeah, Moss beat him and then he laughed at him and then uh, they did an angle with uh, McAfee. And uh, he cuts a promo on Corbin, gets the uh, fans to laugh at him. Corbin slinks to the back. So uh, I mean, it felt watching it. I don't know that I don't know this, but it felt watching it like they're going to do McAfee and Corbin at uh, you know like maybe SummerSlam. That did seem like they were building that up. Yeah, um, <laughs> it probably will be all right. Um, sure will be. Yeah, I know. I know. Probably will probably be all right. The um, but the crowd like. The, the crowd was very into it. Now, you know, Moss is a former University of Minnesota football player. Um, so that, and then there was some local press on him anyway. But um, so so he's probably going to be more over there than, than anywhere else anyway. But the crowd was, was um, very into Moss. We had a Natty interview vowing to be the first person to uh, tap out Ronda Rousey, which I would not put my money on. New Day versus Jinder and uh, Shanky. So they're doing this match. Shanky's running wild, beating up Kingston. And then all of a sudden, on the apron, Wood starts playing his trombone. And this causes Shanky to start dancing. And this makes Jinder Mahal very angry. And so he demands a tag. He immediately gets hit with Trouble in Paradise. And he is pinned. And uh, Shanky continues to dance. And Mahal, Mahal gets mad at him over it. And yeah. uh, Woods keeps playing the trombone, and uh, yep. So we're basically uh, in the midst of our Shanky big turn to be this character babyface. We had a Drew McIntyre Sheamus segment where they're both in the ring, and uh, they of course both got counted out 
disqualified, whatever it was last week. Just disqualification. Double disqualification, yeah. And uh, they both want into the match, and uh, Pierce says, well, you know, we've talked to WWE officials, and, uh, and he says, Sheamus, you're in the match. And, of course, Sheamus, before he can continue, grabs the mic, and he's all happy, and he's going nuts, and McIntyre's all angry, and they end up getting into a brawl. And uh, Pierce grabs the mic and he says, Drew, you never let me finish. You are also in the match. And so uh, McIntyre gives Sheamus the Claymore. And so Sheamus and McIntyre are now in the Money in the Bank match. Shouldn't they like had a... Like, Another match? Uh, like I mean, No DQ, in... no count out? Well, I mean, that would be the natural thing, what you would say, what you would do coming off of a double DQ. Yeah. Coming off wanted... a double DQ of a good match, too. I'm fine seeing that match again. Yeah, I guess the idea is, is they wanted them both in. But you could do a match where, you know, you, you could also have done matches to get them both in. But I guess on this show, maybe they just felt they couldn't fit it in with everything else that they were doing because the whole show was going to be built around uh, Roman Reigns and Riddle and they had other things, so they just went right to it. Yeah, I I thought that that thing was to build up, uh, last week was to build up a rematch where the winner would get in, but they want them both in. We had a uh, bunch of interviews backstage, and this led to Raquel versus Shayna Baszler. Three minutes, Raquel hits her with whatever they're calling her new finish. and yes, uh, basically choke bomb. Pins her, so she is in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Yeah. So they have her smiling and smiling and smiling. Well, you know, these baby faces got to smile. I've been told. Well, she's definitely smiling. She has that smile thing down. Now, Max Dupree is angry about the lighting, and so he's not introducing his new clients yet. I have a feeling I have no idea who these clients are, would be my guess. I got to think that they know. I mean, I... Really? Yeah, I got to think that they got an idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do, you, how do you do this with no idea? You, you do can't. you watch this show? I watch it. Half the I, show is they have no idea. Well... They, uh, when I watch it, it always seems like they have an idea and then they just change their mind the next week. Well, that's clearly happening with Max Dupree. Well, every week he's supposed to introduce him and then he never does, yeah. So I think that may maybe that's the gimmick, is that we every week we're supposed to find out who his first guy is and he just keeps uh, stalling it as part of the story until we finally get the guy. Or guys, or whatever it is. He did say it was more than one person. Well, it's maximum male model, so I presume it is guys. Yeah. Be my guess. Then we had Roman Reigns versus Riddle. They went 17 minutes. They had a very good match. They had a couple of great near falls, including a couple at the end that the fans actually bought. Uh, there was a uh, Superman punch for a near fall. Uh, Reigns went for a spear. Riddle hit the RKO out of nowhere. Fans totally bought that as a finish. Oh, yeah. Hit the floating bro, went for the RKO again, and finally he goes for a springboard and rain spears him out of midair and gets the pin i really like this match it was a great I, match i thought uh you know crowd was super hot rains did a good job as a heel riddle was great R riddle is a really valuable commodity there and um that was a totally needless stipulation i guess the idea you know like they really didn't have to do this if he loses he never gets another shot because it's not like you know what i mean it's like it's not like they've had this long program um, not only that, it's not. You don't even know who you're going to have in three months. What if something happens to Drew McIntyre? What if something happens to What if something happens to Brock Lesnar? Yeah, Riddle's out. You know, Lesnar's doing well, SummerSlam. Well, I guess they could just do. What God they, forbid, Drew gets hurt. You have no challenger. I guess it doesn't matter. They just say, "Well, you can have your shot again." I, yeah, I don't yeah. Even know because why they don't. They don't hold this. people to stipulation, so yes. you could just if if it, if if things change, they'll just like drop the stip. But but still, but there was like. I mean, I, I I think that um, I think that the idea of the stip was to make people think because I think deep down nobody thought Riddle could win, but with the stip, it's almost like well they're doing this stip, so maybe he's really going to win, and then of course he loses, um, and then he dedicates it to Randy Orton, and when he dedicated to Randy Orton, it's like oh my god, it's like freaking Davy Boy Smith all over again, you know, it's like you babyface dedicates the the win to his. You know what I mean? You dedicate the win to your to Randy Orton, and then you go and lose. So, so when that happened, and that could be way, way off, 
but also when you know in wrestling and in wwe in particular wrestling when you go and go i love you randy and you know you're my best friend and everything like that i mean i got the impression he comes back next year and freaking turns on riddle and well i think it's inevitable he's going to turn on him for stealing all of his he'll say you stole all my moves moves, and you 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 fail you you dedicated it to me blah blah you dedicated a match to me and you blew it you know you never won the big one yeah yeah i i i could see that being um i could see that being a direction um and and not a bad one either because um you know Orton and Riddle. Uh, I mean, I think Orton and Riddle, if they if they do the thing, you know, and by in this the way it looks now with with Orton being out for so long, we're not doing it until twenty twenty three. So by that time, you know what, you know, because inevitably that was the idea, and it's a hell of a lot better doing it in twenty twenty three than it would have been doing it in twenty twenty one. And then, of course, as noted, since uh, Randy's out of action, well, we need a new challenger, so. Let's bring back Brock Lesnar for the 85th time. He comes in, beats up Roman Reigns and the Usos, and uh, looks like that's a SummerSlam match. Yeah, I mean, the crowd went nuts for it. I mean, it's funny because it's like when he lost at WrestleMania, I really didn't think he'd be back at SummerSlam. And, of course, that wasn't the plan. But, you know, it is telling, and, of course, everyone's brought it up, and it's true. It's like when when Randy Orton goes down... You know, instead of making somebody, you know, that you've got on the roster, you call up Brock Lesnar. And that's kind of like what they've been doing for years. And it's, uh, you know, they, they, you know, Brock Lesnar is still, compared to everyone else, you know, more larger than life than the other guys. So I understand why they're going with it. But it does feel like um, it does. It's like it's like it'll. That show will probably do well because John Cena is going to be back, and I think John Cena is probably going to sell tickets and everything. Um, and um, you know, so it'll the show the show will do well. I think, um, obviously, not even close to a sellout or anything. And that doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if they sell out or not. Anyway, I mean, they were never going to, but I think that they're going to have a, a big, big crowd. And um, but you know, does does Roman Reigns beat Lesnar again? I mean, is that what? It, Presumably, I guess you know. It's like almost like they kind of back themselves in a corner. Beats Lesnar again. What if? I guess what if like uh, Dwayne's not going to do WrestleMania? Then what do you do? Well, God, what are we going to do if he can't do it? I mean, I don't want to see Roman and Brock for the fourth time at WrestleMania. I know, I know. But it, but if they held it off for a year, but I mean, I think that Cody's going to be you know in. Cody should be in in that spot anyway by then. So, uh, you know, maybe there's uh, whatever, however they're going to work all this. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.